So Matt, thank you for showing us the other scopes, but one thing I learned is with Element, there's always more. Okay. And I'm walking by this, I'm like, what the heck is that? So what the heck is that? Yeah, so this has been a diff difficult secret to keep because it's super, super exciting and interesting. But essentially, this is an optical scope with a digital display. And it kind of takes the best of both worlds. Some of the inherent weaknesses of a purely digital system, terrible battery life, it just chews a lot of power. Um, you're looking at a, at a, a viewfinder essentially, mm -hmm. so there's always gonna be a little bit of lag and you're not gonna get the resolution of a normal optical system. I mean, this is, this is uh, HD glass, very, very clear, okay. and parallax down to 10 meters or yards, so you can okay. get nice and crisp in. Um, and as far as battery life goes, I mean, we've had this thing running for four days at the show and it's still at like 60 or 70% battery. You can leave this thing running for weeks, okay. which is awesome. But what's cool about this is uh, we developed uh, an app, Element okay. Ballistics app, you create a ballistic so profile. Even taking yeah. a step back, so I mean, we have an optic and then we have some jigama thing on the front. What's that jigama thing and like, what does it do? I'll get to this. This, okay. is a, this is a range finder module. Okay. Um, but you create a ballistic profile on, on, your, on the Element Ballistics app. Okay. You send your profile over to the scope. The okay. profile is loaded onto the scope. You can then put your phone away. It doesn't have to be connected anymore. Okay. And with that profile loaded and with your reticle selected, you can choose a reticle, mil or MOA or okay. simple or whatever you want. You then get your distance value either dialed in manually. Okay. You can dial in your distance. You can actually dial in your windage also, or you can get from an external source like a rangefinder module okay. or a handheld rangefinder, sends it over. When the rangefinder is connected, you can actually put your rangefinder beam on a small square in the display. So you know like, like I need to put that square on a, on a small mm -hmm. target to get it, a, an accurate range. And once your range is sent over, you can set it, the scope to either shift your reticle to where your predicted point of impact is going to be, or you can have a, dot, a, a small dot showing where your predicted in, point of impact is going to be. Okay. So it takes a lot of the, uh, the time out of having to get a firing solution from your ballistics calculator and then dialing it in manually. It does it all for you. Okay. And there's a built-in barometer, thermometer. Uh, humidity, sensors, inclinometer, everything, and that it's all taken into account in real time. Okay. So I find this really, really cool. So on the channel, I mean, well, I guess let's talk about the traditional way of hunting. Yes. So somebody's going to go out, they're going to go try to either find the distance, then they're either going to have to know what the holdovers or they need to dial it in. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next evolution out, okay, you can use a range finder that's going to give you the exact thing. You can pop up an app. It's going to tell you what the holdover is, but then you yeah. still need to mess with the scope. Over the past couple of years, we've seen some solutions where they basically, you'll use a separate range finder, range something, and they'll send it to the scope, which will just kind of highlight something. Yes. Uh, but you still need to mess around with this. And it kind of looks like this just does everything for you. Yes, and <laughs> so I'll tell you what's nice about this as opposed to something like a traditional scope that then shows a dot where your point okay. of impact is gonna be. Because that's still a traditional rifle scope, you've got an erector system in here and you've still got physical turrets. Mm -hmm. The fact that we don't have that means there's no moving parts. There's less that can shift and go okay. wrong. And there's more space in here for the optical system, which means we can get an insane field of view. This is a seven times scope, okay. but the field of view is closer to a three times traditional okay. scope. So you're getting that peripheral awareness of what's around you, even though okay. you've still got that magnification. So, because everything's inside the scopes, I mean, with a typical scope, we're talking about, well, even for example, like the Titan, one of the reasons yes. why it's so awesome is because it has ample internal elevation adjustments, yes. whether you're shooting ELR rimfire or hunting. Are there some sort of limits like that to the scope? Or, because I mean, like, I'm sure there can be limits to the range finder, but I guess, do we have to worry about internal elevation adjustment, things like that here? You don't. There's plenty of elevation adjustment in here, but the, the mount that comes with the scope okay. also is tilt adjustable to, oh. to ATMOA. So you can add tons more elevation if you need it, so that you can keep that reticle centered where you need it. But as far as rangefinder goes, the small rangefinder module, that's really built for, a comp, for compact okay. design, so that won't range ridiculously far but if you're in in tough light conditions or you want to shoot really far we work on handheld yeah. units that we've tested out to 3,000 yards okay. on non-reflective targets so you can engage from really long distance okay. if, if you need to so yeah. I mean, obviously your range is going to be kind of limited by the uh, seven power magnification on the optic but the ballistics 
solution, or I guess kind of like for people, okay, people are going to be saying, wow, this is really, really super cool, but I mean, I want more magnification. So I'm sure down the line, you're, you're thinking this technology so is going to be applied. So Harper stands for Hybrid Precision Rifle Scope. Okay. Seven is the variant. Okay. So we'll be, we'll be working on other products, which will be, <laughs> let's say, a three times, a three by 30, yeah. which is more sort of for military applications. Yeah. Um, and then this technology can go into whatever else. We can yeah. put it into a traditional rifle scope size if we want okay. and have that extra magnification. So this is just the, the first variant. Okay. And the ballistics apps and the software, is there a limit to the uh, how far it calculates or I guess who are you, who, what's being used in the back end? Because I mean, so a lot of the other technologies, I mean, they'll use like either applied ballistics light. So that's, those are generally going to be limited to, let's say, seven, 800 yards. Then you have like AB Pro, which is going to go out to 4,000. Not that a lot of people are shooting past 4,000, but... I, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a top end limit, okay. but the software takes... I mean, spin drift into okay. account. It takes it takes everything into account that most high end okay. uh, ballistic calculators take, and we have tested this out to long range, mm -hmm. and it, it it matches up with a lot yeah. of the other uh, ballistic software yeah. that's out there. So for the Hyper Seven, I guess who's the initial target market? I mean, is it? Like, it almost seems like on one hand it could be like law enforcement. Yeah. Well, um, on the other hand, hunters. We we don't really know because it's so new. And I guess we'll find that out quite soon. But the idea for the seven times is that it's, it's especially with this field of views, that it's quite a versatile yeah. system. Um, and obviously, we'll, we'll refine and have um, more targeted um, audiences and more targeted users down the line with other products. But this is really putting our feet in the water and seeing um, how this is received and who wants it. Okay. And the beauty, the beauty of it is the firmware can be adapted to preferences of whoever wants to use it if we find there's a specific group of people who need this whether it's military or whatever we can actually add features to it to to make it more suited to their needs okay so there is a similar concept that i saw from a company that was in europe and a lot of like so we we're slav guns so i follow a lot of the sniper matches and everything in russia and people there's a package uh, that was similar and i looked into it and it was like not really available in the united states but then you needed to sell like three or four children in order to be able to afford it. Uh, how many children will somebody need to sell in order to be able to afford this? So we don't want to advertise any prices yet because it, it, uh, it probably will, we have to refine yeah. that over the next couple of weeks and months, yeah. but we're looking at a second quarter 2023 okay. uh, public release. And I would, I would estimate, don't quote, quote me Obviously. on this, but probably, Fourteen hundred to seventeen hundred dollars retail. All okay, right, that's just for this, and how much for the laser and all that stuff? Uh, this will be <laughs> this will be separate. Um, obviously, different people have different preferences. Yeah. Some people might want to use the handheld unit okay. or something. So this will be a separate purchase. This um, range finder module is not that expensive. Okay. Um, so you're not looking at a huge add-on to get that. So somebody should be able to get the complete package for like under two thousand. I would I would say so, yes. Which is freaking nuts. I mean, so yeah. the other competing package, I mean, it was five or six thousand yeah. dollars, and this looks really really good. I mean, that that's impressive. Yeah, and <laughs> and, uh, and a little insight: we we are aiming to have this made entirely within Europe, within awesome. within the next few months, I'd say. So the balls, the, I mean, that, that really opens the doors to all kinds of military contracts and, and even just the, you know, to be able to say this is entirely European made, right. that's a big, that's a big yeah. step in the right direction. Because I'm mean, sure there are places where the agencies were like, nope, we're, like great product, where is it made? Oh, not made here or where, whatever location is. Yeah. And unfortunately it's we can't buy it. It's also to have everything made in a stable country. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so here's a question for him, just because you brought it up. So he works over Bluetooth, the Bay Communicate. Is there a possibility that if somebody already has, let's say, a high-end range-finding pair of binos uh, or a range-finder that has Bluetooth capability, can that possibly work with this? Um, definitely. Okay. It's, just a, it's just a case of getting permission from that manufacturer okay. to use their data to to take their data and, and, and be able to read it on this device. Okay. So yes, it can be programmed. When that will happen, it really depends on the, 
demand for that okay. and the and getting commission from those other manufacturers. So yes. what you guys need to do if you're interested in this, whether you're planning on buying this or not, go hammer Zeiss and go hammer Vortex and Sig to let them work with this because it's awesome. Or you know they might just buy this out because like they need this. <laughs> Because it's impressive. I mean, it's definitely very, very impressive. Yeah. Uh, and it came out of left field. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's very exciting. As I say, we still, it's, it's a big unknown as to who actually wants us and yeah. how the, how it's going to be used. But we feel like if we're not pushing the, the envelope on, on where things are going and actually trying to get ahead of everyone else, yeah. then we're going to get left behind. So obviously, we've got a ton of focus on the more traditional uh, mechanical products, yeah. and we will. Keep continue to do that, but this is the future. But you know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of tech people. So I mean, somebody like who's a gun owner and they love watching longer range videos. They watch loving people shoot gun games, but they're like, well, maybe I don't need a Theos because I'm never going to stretch it out to the distance. But they look at, the, but they might be technology people and like they look at this like, hey, this would look really really cool in my Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they would just buy it just to have it, and well, because I mean, it almost makes shooting a lot less stressful yes okay 100%. and i guess the final question so is that going to come with the mount or is it just yes. the optic how does it it will come with the mount because i mean this this uh tube diameter here is not necessarily easy to find um so it will come with the mount and it will come with three different lengths for the base of the mount so depending on what what you, what hourly if you want or what rifle you want mm -hmm. to put it on um it's very adaptable very, very cool. So this is the new Hyper 7 by Element. Totally came out of left field. Uh, where can people find, Matt, where can people find more information on this? Is it already in the website? Is it going to be in the website? And how can they be notified uh, when this is going to be available for purchase? So this is not on the website yet because we still have a few small things to finalize. We don't want to put information out okay. until it's finalized. Um, but be assured that when it, it goes up, we will make it very clear to everyone and we'll, we'll try put as much information out there as possible. As soon as I get home, I'm starting a, a video series going through every feature in depth. So you'll be able to find that on the Element Optics YouTube channel, I'm sure, quite soon. And until then, you'll be, it'll be a, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of videos on this from other Optics people as well. Yes. Uh, so definitely something very, very cool. So if you looked at the new uh, Titan scopes, we looked at the new Theoscope, and this, the Hyper 7, totally awesome. I mean, just from the tech side, I mean, like, it's really, really, really exciting. So, Matt, thank you very much for taking the Absolute time to pleasure. meet with me. Thank you. And let me know what you guys think. I mean, what are you interested in? Is this something that you'd be worth considering? And how do you envision using this? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Keep on squatting, and we'll see you in the next video linked up here.